Well, this week I should have been at the URC West Midland Synod Ministers Summer Conference at the Hayes in Swanwick. I'm never quite sure why they call it the Summer Conference, as we don't have a winter one, nor a spring nor autumn one either for that matter. But anyway, the opportunity for a couple of days on the edge of the Peak District, resting, talking to colleagues and being well fed, or, or should that be wrestling with issues of contemporary theology and grappling with thorny questions of missiology and ecclesiology, I don't know. But anyway, it's been scuppered this year by the current COVID-19 situation. However, the powers that be decided to put it all online. So I've had to get my own breakfast and find my way to the study for an extended period of staring at the Zoom screen, envying the opulence of other ministers' interior decor, and occasionally breaking out into smaller groups with people whose Zoom captions give very little hint as to their real names, which I have embarrassingly forgotten. The rhythm of the day has been broken up by the leader of the session wondering why he can't access material that is actually on his other device, which his wife, who's also a minister, is using in another room, and by watching long, silent contributions from people who've forgotten to unmute their laptops. On the whole, though, exaggerations for purely comic effect aside, the experience was a good one and we spent some very fruitful time looking at the way the coronavirus has affected our ministry and more importantly at this time discussing where we go from here. In fact having spent some time as elders talking about that in the context of our own church very recently it was heartening to discover the many commonalities between the two groups. The main thing to come out of all this discussion at the moment, though, is that there is so much which is unknown. A contributor to one of our conference sessions used an analogy which he said had come from someone else. We didn't say who, but it suggested that the COVID-19 crisis had begun with a blizzard, a rush of problems to which we just had to batten down the hatches. And then it moved into winter which is where we are now with long-term difficulties that we're actually just starting to come to terms with. But eventually, we will move out into a new mini ice age, emerging, as he put it, into a completely different landscape. And I found that idea particularly helpful. There'll be so much that is new and unfamiliar. We aren't sure when things will happen. We have no real idea of how we should be preparing due to uncertainties about social distancing guidelines and cleansing routines and all that sort of thing. We can't really decide who will be allowed to do what when the time comes. Age and vulnerability and so on will obviously be factors in that. And there is, of course, always the possibility that we might need to return to some sort of lockdown again if there's a second wave of the virus in England. As always, it's the unknowns that cause the problems and lead to anxiety and unease. But that's true of all of life, when you think of it, even the Christian life. I came across part of one of Eddie Askew's little meditations. Some of you uh, may be familiar with them, but it was quoted in the night prayer liturgy that I use uh, from the Northumbria community, by the way, very highly recommended. Uh, I looked up the complete piece in his book, Many Voices, One Voice. And just before the section that was quoted, Askew had written, when I said I'd follow you, I meant it, Lord, but I didn't know it would be like this. Fortunately, for those of us who have made that decision to follow God, he has promised to take care of us, whatever happens, however scary we find the unknown to be. And we can trust him because he does know the future and what it holds. As he told his beleaguered people through the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 29 and verse 11 of uh, the book of Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And in the end, that's all we have to hang on to. But it's a promise we can trust. As Peter told uh, Jesus in John chapter 6, there's no one else to turn to anyway. As we move into this new landscape, into the new normal, let's encourage and support one another as we cling to God's word and ask him to strengthen our faith. Stay alert, stay focused on God, and stay hopeful.